Hey everyone, Adam Zollinger here from LearnArchViz. Welcome to my channel all about architectural visualization. If you're interested in free ArcViz content or possibly joining some of my professional training courses, along with over 100,000 other students, you're in the right place. While you are here, make sure to like and subscribe if you benefit from the content. I try to post all my free stuff here on this channel, plus previews and discounts for any paid content. So click the bell icon if you want to be notified of all the latest. Thanks for watching. The following video is a free preview from a larger course. Follow the links in the description to find the best deal for the full content. All right, for the last little bit about lighting, we of course need to look at like regular lights instead of just a sun, right? To do that, we would be dealing with probably interior lights here. So first I want to put some glass on the windows. And fortunately, the new V-Ray, V-Ray 5, has this cool material browser, and we can just put a glass. Okay, with the glass here in the V-Ray material, we can have this glass selected on my building. Right-click here and apply to selected objects. Okay. Super easy, super cool that this is available. Now, let's just, with the material editor open, let's grab this little pick material from object thing and just grab that glass. And we can look at it here. If you don't know anything about materials yet, and if you don't have V-Ray 5, then what you can do is just grab, just make your diffuse color black, your reflect color sort of white, and your refract color white and copy these settings here and you should have some glass that you can see through to put into your scene so that we can test out lighting okay we're going to get into the materials a lot more later but if you don't have v-ray 5 where you can just drop this in then that's what you can do okay i'm going to do one other thing and that's just put put the glass material on this sub object of this door here so I'm selecting the element of the glass part and just going to my glass and saying assign to selection. Okay, and that can do it to the sub object only. So the rest of it remains this default material. Okay, now that that's there, if we just look at the rendering, we'll see that now we have glass here and we need to light up the inside of our scene, right? A couple different ways to do that. The important part is, you know, seeing how these lights work. So I'm going to use strictly V-Ray lights because that's what we're learning about. Okay, in, in a V-Ray light, in a standard V-Ray light, there is different kinds. We already saw the dome. There's a sphere light. There's a mesh light. There's a disc light. And there's a plane light. Plane and disc are the same, essentially, except one has a, a disc-shaped emitter, light emitter. Okay, and one has a plane shaped like that. Okay, so they both emit light in the same way, same direction even. The arrow is showing you the direction they point light. But they have different shaped emitters. Okay, now the arrows, like I said, is showing the way that it points. We can go to this rectangle slash disc light and tell it to be more directional. Okay, so we can say when it's selected it shows what direction it's going. Okay, so this is just making it more of a spotlight versus more of a, a light that shines kind of straight out to the sides. Okay, so you'll, you'll want to adjust that to make your lights look more accurate to what you're trying to do. This one we can preview the direction when selected, and it's got the same thing going on, but you can see it's more square than circular. Okay, and that's it. We can put these into the scene. So say we wanted can lights. Let's just use this one as an example. So we want to make this a can light, which means we need to make the radius smaller, like a can light. It matters. A can light would be either two inch radius or three inch radius. We'll say two. And then a can light will shine down kind of like that. Let's put it into our house. 
go to the right view, make sure it's in the right place. We'll put it up here. And we'll kind of cheat a little bit too, and we'll just make it visible so that we don't even have to model a can light. We'll just leave that light visible right there. Okay, I'm locking the selection and then I'm going to copy. Actually instance it. And these ones go on this cloud here. Okay, so I have four lights up on that ceiling now. Let's see what it looks like just as it is. You can see we're getting basically no light in there and that's again because of relative exposure. Okay, so whatever our settings for our sky and our exposure are on the camera is way, way brighter than what these lights are putting out. So you can hardly see them. But in a nighttime scene, we'd want more balance between those things. So again, we can go to the V-Ray Light Lister here or on my custom over here. And it's going to be these lights here. We would set them to, if these are inside lights, we want something really warm. Instead of 6500 is more like daylight outside, we would want more like 3000, which is a more warm light. And then we can put them up to like 300. Okay, now it's starting to work. What if we put them to 2,000? And let's say we put this to a true soft white color, which would be set 2,700. Okay, now we're starting to light the inside of our scene. Okay, let's look. Let's put like a chandelier back here that has a spherical light. Let's see what that looks like. So V-Ray Sphere Light, let's close some of this stuff up. We'll just be Create, Light, V-Ray, V-Ray Light, and we'll just change it to Sphere. And a Sphere Light is going to project light in all directions around it, instead of just down, like we had those plane lights and the can lights. This one is just going to emit light in all directions. And one thing I didn't mention, we talked about the radius of these cans. So these are area lights, which means that the light is being emitted from this whole disk, not from a point, which what used to be standard with like standard 3ds Max lights. They have something called a point light. So it comes from just a point. These are actually coming from this entire disk, which means that it's an area light and it casts area shadows. So if I made this huge, let's, before we get to our sphere light, let's do this. So just as an example, let's create a sphere right here and set it on our back patio. And then light it with this thing. This, this is a very important principle with lights. Okay, let's turn that thing up to 3000 and render. Okay, that's a little too bright. Okay, there we go. So I put it at 500 and that brings up another interesting point too. And that is that the size of the light matters. These can lights had to be turned way up to to light up the room. But this big light out here, since it's huge, well, compared to the can lights, it doesn't need nearly as much intensity to light something up. Okay, but also because of the size of it, you can see the shadow on there is kind of crisp that it's casting. If I make this bigger, it will not only affect the intensity of the light, but it will affect the shadows that it's casting and how light is emitted. So now light is being emitted from that entire light and so it's way brighter and it's also going to cast way softer shadows so let's turn it way down to 20. okay now you see the edges of that shadow are much more blurred and softened because light's being emitted from all directions on it okay hopefully that makes sense now if a sun is at noonday it's going to be 
casting very, very sharp shadows because it's very far away and it's almost just a point in the sky. But if a light is big and it's up close to an object, it's going to be casting these nice area soft shadows. Okay, so that keep that in mind. Again, physically accurate with V-Ray. Okay, now the last thing we're going to talk about here is the sphere light. We already saw it, but let's take a look. Right now it just looks like a ball sitting back there, not putting off a ton of light, although on that back wall it does look pretty good. Let's change the temperature again, put it something really warm. And that's an artistic principle that we, we have this nice, cool outdoor light. We can really draw attention to the inside by putting warm light inside there. So you can see that color, that temperature is very warm. And then let's just adjust the intensity. 200, that'll really brighten it up in there. And then let's make it invisible because we would actually model a chandelier to put in there to light that up. Okay, so now we're starting to light the inside of our scene. doesn't look great. We'd have to really go in and pay attention to where we want the lights and how we want them working and mess with all the intensity and all that stuff to get it to look like a really nice balance going on for the outside and the inside light. But these are the principles that we'll use and the tools that we'll use in order to do that.